So field offices are finally out, and while I may have been wrong about benches too, I'm more than happy to see this update finally come to be. But how did we get here? Lore-wise, that is. A few weeks ago, Toontown Rewritten started dropping hints about the whole thing, and afterwards started a full-scale ARG. And today, I'm gonna take you through each part of it, starting with... On November 20th, a new blog post was featured on Toontown Rewritten's website. This post came with the headline that the Cogs had called a truce with the tunes. Alongside this was a coded note. Shifting over each letter in the note 15 times gets you this. To whom it may concern. Today we offer you a chance to end these heavy-handed tactics taken in the streets of Toontown every day. See this as us handing you the proverbial olive branch tunes. We could handily come to a compromise between Cogs and tunes, but what we need is your cooperation. We've been stricken glad by the support this proposal has received up and down the corporate ladder of Cogs Incorporated. All that remains now is for the final handshake, Toontown's written signature agreeing to our terms of truce. We know that the jargon of these contracts can be quite a handful for you Toon types, so we'll go ahead and sum it up for you in clear words. You'll go ahead and hand over select Toontown assets to Cogs Incorporated, whose legal department will promptly seize them. In return, the Toons will be introduced to new forms of conducting business, improving your oh-so-silly society. Plus, both sides will cease their qualms with one another. Let's shake on it, Toontown. Our cold callers will be in touch whenever is least convenient. Then at the top, this note translates to Toon Sleuths, we need you, Toontown Resistance Supplies. And it's signed by someone called A.S. Now since Toontown is never really spelled with this awkward space in the middle, people quickly figured out that this was actually a URL tune.town slash resistance supplies, which when typed into your browser will get you this image. Everything on the image with a star next to it appears in the cellbot factory in a barrel, and because Firehose was also underlined, it seemed like a good place to start. And it took a few hours, but the order was eventually figured out. The order is hose, jelly beans, ice cream, birthday cake, feather, jelly beans, cream pie, lipstick, trunk, jelly bean, feather, hose, ice cream. And if you pick all of those up in the right order, you'll get a new speed chat phrase, where is the tune resistance? Alongside a clue to ask around town to see who knows the answer. A few usual suspects were questioned like Flippy and Lil Oldman, but nothing came up until we went to Honey Do This, Honey Do That on Oak Street. Inside, Nagy Nell will tell you that you already had the answer to your question and to quote, link them up, giving you the same combination of gag barrels that you got in the factory. Which means that putting together the link, tune.town slash firehose, jelly beans, laugh, birthday cake, feather, jelly beans, whole cream, pie, lipstick, elephant, trunk, jelly beans, bean, feather, firehose, <gasps> laugh, will get you this video. It's set as an old training video for the tune resistance, letting us know that the tune resistance may soon need us, but only if you meet three requirements. At least 100 laugh, all of your cog suits, and at least one level 7 gag. And that was the end of ARG Day 1. Not really technically anything about field offices specifically, but everyone kind of knew what they were ramping up to. It was just up to the rest of the ARG to pick up the slack. We got our next update on November 24th with Ripley's Resistance broadcast, which leads us to ARG Part 2. Part 2 of the ARG is a bit of a doozy. It stars our new character Resistance Ranger Ripley. She mentions in the blog post that the silly meter is being kicked into maximum overdrive, which means that they're going to max out the silly meter right after the last cycle just finished. Maybe that's important or something. The only direct clue that we get is when our good friend AS from Part 1 tells us that 539 is the key. This of course got everyone's head spinning because it was kind of a vague hint, but that all kind of went away when Rewritten made an edit to the article. Instead of saying 539 is the key, it says 539 means key. And lining that up with a telephone keypad, uh, yep, that checks out. So now that we know we're using a code based off of a keypad, let's check back in and see what's going on in game. Yo, what's Sir Lee doing on the bench? It's just too BB. Yeah, so the next part of the ARG is about Dr. Sir Lee giving off, like, hints on the bench. Specifically, he pointed to the invasion counts. And honestly, I just think it's funny that the person playing Surly had to get around the whitelist. But what he's referring to were the Skelecog invasions that were currently happening. Each invasion had a fixed amount of cogs. And if you ran those numbers through the keypad, you'd get this message. Tune.town slash doomsday archive. At this point, you know the drill. Entering that into your browser brings you here. On the site, there's a blueprint and a note. But the newspaper article is what really matters here. 
The highlighted letters refer to jelly bean gardening combinations. Planting and selling the Laffodil, Lily Pad, Chimpanzee, Hybrid Carnation, Midsummer Daisy, Liver Lily, Corn Rose, Side Carnation, One Lip, and Time and a Half a Dill will get you this code in the mailbox. Fun fact, the only reason that this was solvable that night was because they remaxed the Silly Meter with Speedy Garden Growth. But entering that code into a Toon.Town link brought you to a new comic. It's a cute little story about Ripley and friends defeating the VP, and afterwards finding a memo that finally gets things moving on the field office front. But that's already the end of part two, actually. This part was pretty neat, and I liked the comic that went alongside it. But I can't help but feel like it was held back a little bit by the fact that some of these things were so time sensitive. Like, you can go back and do part one from scratch. However, I guess that's kind of the nature of ARGs. This time, however, we didn't have to wait very long between parts, as the next one came out on November 26th, two days later. So why don't we jump into part three? If part two is difficult, then part three is ridiculous. Part three starts with an article written by Samantha Spade. She recorded some COGS conversation over the radio, and included in the article was a recording of the conversation. Let's take a listen. Obviously it's not a fun listen, since COGS don't exactly speak English. But if you pay attention to the stompers, you'll notice a pattern. They strike either one, two, three, or four times. <clears throat> so anyways, if you think of the buttons in the warehouse as if they're 1 through 4, you can enter the code for the stomps you hear in the audio. The code is 1433124332143422214. Entering it correctly will get you three whispers. Each of them have a number associated with them. Putting these through an A12Z6 cipher, you'll find the words wait5, lousy, and social. Bit of a plot twist here, but these two are actually red herrings and mean nothing but entering tune.town slash wait5 into your browser gives you this image. So what the heck is this and how do you solve it? It's kinda obvious, isn't it? All you have to do is make a new tune, go to the tutorial, and wait5. Minutes, that is, until this cold caller starts talking. Wait like this for 12 different phrases, and then put every phrase back into the card. Putting together the highlighted letters gets you the phrase silo buttons. Grab a friend, find the right phrase, the foreman is trouble. And what this basically means is that you have to go into both silos, grab a friend, press the buttons at the same time while also saying we are in trouble from speed chat. This will give you a whisper from the foreman who says that these tunes are in trouble alright, they're barking up the wrong tree if they want the CFO project. The CFO project was actually originally from Crash Cashpot back in 2019, and since these are sellbot field offices, it got people pretty confused on what Crash Cashbot had to do with anything. So the next and final step is to defeat the factory. Doing so will get you a few messages from Samantha Spade. She congratulates you on what you found and sends you to a Toon.Town link for part 2 of the comic. Samantha interrupts the Toon Council meeting to tell everyone that CFO Project actually stood for COG Field Offices the whole time. And with that, we've made it to the end of part 3. This part was really difficult, but I think it was all worth it because the comic is really entertaining. Honestly, I could watch an entire movie about Samantha Spade annoying everyone around her. Now the fourth and final part of the ARG was released on November 29th. So let's jump into what is no doubt the hardest part of this whole thing. Part 4 starts off with a blog post like normal, this time from Dr. Sir Lee. He needs help deciphering the field office blueprints the resistance intercepted, and of course the Toontown community never backs down from a good puzzle. So let's take a look at the first one. You can decode the encrypted text by running it through a visionaire cipher, the key for which is actually found in a memo all the way back from the elections. It basically just describes to how field offices are going to work and what kind of floors they'll be. The backside, however, is, uh... really confusing. There is some text over here which can be translated with the same key. To access nearby target status. 1. Use street schematics to pinpoint location. 2. Fly to the coordinates near the target. 
3, tune internal antenna according to operating handbook. In the event that this feature is unavailable, send in a bug report. Now what this all means is, and I kid you not, overlay the maps to the streets Pajama Place, Elm Street, Oak Street, Alto Avenue, Tenor Terrace, and Walrus Way according to their Tune HQ placement. You can read the remaining numbers that are uncovered as coordinates. Going to those coordinates on Pajama Place and saying send in a bug report gets you one last message. This feature is not yet available. For assistance, please contact 1830-COGS, Inc. Yes, phone charges may apply. So what happens when you call that number? Once you reach Cogspeak, pressing different numbers on your keypad will get you more music, a bit more Cogspeak, and volume warning. Yeah, not exactly the most pleasant thing to listen to. Pressing different numbers will get you different audio, and running those through an SSTV decoder will get you nine different images. Essentially just staticky images of rooms inside the field office. Once all the images were found, everyone in game received the same whisper leading to the final part of the comic where Flippy gives Ripley some advice on how to be a leader. I'm not going to spoil anything because I legitimately think the comic is worth a read. But with that, we have officially completed part 4, but not only that, we've completed the whole ARG. Only two days later, the first official Field Office trailer released on their YouTube channel, setting the official launch day for only two days later. And now Field Offices are out. We can actually say that now. This update has been a really long time coming. And I think the ARG was a great way to get us ready without just immediately throwing the whole thing at us. Except the fact that there was like two days between trailer and release, like what, what was up with that? But regardless, it's here now, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts. How did you like the ARG? Did you participate in it? And what would you like to see in Toontown Rewritten's future ARGs? Leave your thoughts in the comments, I'd love to read them. Now if you'll excuse me, I think I left my cake in the boiler.